The goal for today's practice was to paint a tiger. Now, don't get me wrong, I had painted tigers before. Unfortunately, I walked away from the experience with the belief that I cannot paint tigers. So back to now, the goal was to paint a tiger. Because I wanted to, because they're trendy right now, and for once, a trend sounds cool to me. So yeah. My first tip for any creative practice is to take it slow and to focus only on the next task or problem to be solved. I already found a reference on Unsplash. I'll put it on the screen now. So the first problem I needed to solve was what colors to use. I like to do this part a bit intuitively. I go through my swatch cards of colors, one at a time, and pull out ones that stand out or seem fitting. In this case, it was neutrals like raw sienna, burnt umber and black, and some yellow ochre too. I'm using acrylic gouache, which is matte, velvety, highly pigmented paint that cures or dries all the way, like acrylic paint. It's flat and opaque like traditional gouache, but layerable like acrylics. I have a Skillshare class called Getting to Know Your Paint, where I walk beginners through getting acquainted with watercolor, gouache, and acrylic gouache. I'll share the link below, which will get new Skillshare students a full month of courses, mine and all the other amazing teachers on there, for free. And if you're already a student, then you know that you can begin watching my and everyone else's courses as soon as you're ready and at your own pace. So anyway, I've picked my colors, that problem is solved, and now the next problem is where to start on the paper. So I grab my pencil and do a light sketch to outline the shape of the head and the placement of the eyes and the nose. It's time to get the paint on the paper. That's the next problem to solve. In looking at the reference, it looks like the colorful saturated parts of the tiger fur lay beneath the darker details. So I'm going to lay down mixes of the ochre, raw sienna, and burnt umber to begin creating a base form for the head. While I'm painting, I'm looking at the reference, looking for areas of lighter ochre and darker umber. I try to add marks of paint to correspond with what I'm seeing, leaving the page untouched where I want the white fur and eyes to show through. I let my paint get extra watery in the areas that I want to feather the edge, especially as I move towards the edge of the face and away from the focal point of the eyes. This softer edge texture also helps the paint look like fur. With a lighter valued form in place, I begin to layer thicker paint to carve out the face form a little bit more. Whereas before I was looking at the color or the hue, now I'm looking at the values the light and dark values that help my eye read this as a tiger. I dip into my black paint and start laying down the dark areas that define the eye shape and pull in the viewer's eye. I got a little overzealous with the darker hues. I wanted to paint a frame around the tiger face, but instead it pulled away from the focal point of the dark tiger eyes. So I began covering with ivory and ochre and tried again to soften the edges to keep the viewer's eye on the eye of the tiger. I won't play the song. For finishing touches, I used my same size 6 round brush, but I utilized the point of the brush to get finer marks, which I used to define the pupil of the eye, as well as add lines around the nose and little whisker dots around the mouth. So to the critic in my head that said, but I don't know how to paint a tiger, and to the critic in your head that's serving up all types of bowl, might I suggest taking it one, small creative problem at a time. Clear a space, grab your materials, begin, 
and see it through. If you want to get to know your watercolor, gouache, and or acrylic gouache with me, I've got a freaking glorious and beginner-friendly Skillshare course for you, and if you're new, a month of free learning. We, your creative community, have been waiting for you over at Skillshare. Happy painting!